nostalgic because I remember it more. Same thing with like Pokemon in the Owen region, it's just I remember it more. I grew up in the first season of Yu-Gi-Oh! and I have memories of it, I've watched on TV. But the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX stuff again, it's just something I remember more as a younger adult, I guess younger kid. Or an older kid, I guess would be the correct terminology. Also, Zane was just so cool. Blue Eyes White Dragons were cool, but they only had like Blue Eyes and the Ultimate Dragon. There weren't too many other aspects of that. I do have to get the God cards now that I remember. I don't have the God cards in the GBI version. So moving down the page, we got all these uh, Cyber Net Dark Heels. Someone was selling them for like mad cheap, and I was like, yeah, give me them, bro. The Cyber Dark Edge was always the most expensive and hard to get, so I, I only have one, and I was like, oh, I don't feel like spending all this money on another like even more money, just annoying. We got three horns. I think horns gotta be one of my favorite in the Cyber Dark series. Uh, here's the like fusions. We have the ultimate rare Cyber Twin. This is a Japanese unlimited Cyber Dark or Cyber End, and then we have the Cyber Dark Dragon. I was never able to get the Cyber Dark or Cyber End Dragon. It still bugs me. A couple years ago, it was like 40 bucks, and I didn't pull the trigger. Then it went to like a hundred and I still didn't pull the trigger. Now it's like a thousand dollars like selling on eBay. It's unreal how much money, especially Cyber End, went up in value. But this is the thing, right the, the important thing. The market is deeming the card at a thousand dollars. About let's just say I estimate it's probably like twelve hundred. Today you might be like, oh, I want that card really badly, but I think it's too expensive. I'll wait for it to come down. It may never ever come down. At least in your lifetime. Every single Yu Gi Oh player is dead or whatever, the card might come down. But if you want to own the card that badly, sometimes you just gotta pull the trigger because you don't actually know if it'll ever come down and you don't know the value of the asset a year from now. Because at like $100, this was like really expensive to me. I was like, oh wait, I saw that at XYZ price. And that's just the thing about investing too. It's you gotta know when to just pull the trigger and say, you know what, I want it at this price. Even if you think you might be overpaying a little bit. And the risk might be a little higher if you want to own the product or the asset. Sometimes, again, you just gotta pull the trigger or you'll never get there. Especially if you have no position in the product. If you have room and a size to work with, then yeah, you can say, you know, if it comes down, then I'll add to my position. But if you don't have a position and you really want one, sometimes you just gotta pull the trigger, you know. Cyber Dark Dragon bought it for like 23 bucks. I have the TCG like receipt. So I, I should just bought them all, but that's the thing too. When I bought it at like 23 bucks, I was like, oh, that's 23. It's kind of expensive, but it's not that bad, right? Like, relatively, that's, that was just the price of it. Same thing with these. I think I bought one for like 60, 70 dollars. Then I saw the price was rising so quickly, and I was like, I want more. You know, I still want more. I want at least three. Preferably like 10, but like three, you know, for a collection. And then I ended up buying one like 140. I just like I just slammed this guy with the bid on Instagram. I was like, yo, just give it to me 140. And he just gave it to me because my price was so high. And at that time, like yeah, 140 for Cyber Dragon. They're selling like 120 or 110. I was overpaying. I don't knew it, but I just wanted the product. And look at it now. What is it? in like a near mint condition? Like 400 bucks, and maybe maybe 350 will be a little uh, on the safe side for an ungraded like near mint. Now, I'm not saying, obviously, you should go out and buy everything that you want and overcharge everything, but I'm just saying, if you want something bad enough, just buy it, because like with the Cyber and Dragon, I wanted Ultimate Rare so bad, and I kept finding, uh, I said, oh, when this happens, when that, I think I haven't done that enough. We got some Infinities, this is just a cool page. We got the Cyber, I don't even know what this is called, but I do want an English one. It's still really cheap, I, I could just buy it whenever, but. I can that's the mentality, but something like this, it's still really new. So I'm not expecting the price to all of a sudden just jump up. I mean, it could, but I'm not expecting it just because of the supply of the product in the current market. Here we have an ultra rare power bond. I need an ultimate rare, but I don't feel like spending like 150 bucks. But again, maybe in a year from now, it'll be like 300. I have no idea. But I don't know right now, I don't want to spend it on that. I'd rather put it to something else. Cyberdark M2. 
first edition stuff will always increase like three or four times as much because there's just, again, the supply. And that's the weird thing too. It's like, just because you have a first edition stamp on it or sticker or whatever text, the artwork's the same. Like, everything's exactly the same. But it's just that card and that edition is rare because of the print runs. This change of art, let's say this is perfect near mint. Let's say this is perfect near mint. This could be like 10 bucks. This could be like 100 150. That's such a big difference in the collectible world. Maybe that will change though. Maybe people are like, you know what? I don't really care for a first edition sticker thing. I'll just get that. And you can capitalize on this type of market where people don't want to spend that extra like $100 or whatever for, the, for say this card. But just know that the market is more saturated and the supply of this card has increased so much because there's no stamp. But again, it's kind of, hey, how do you want to the game invest. Love Blue Eyes Ultimate. Here's some Blue Eyes page. These Blue Eyes uh, um, SDKs Unlimited went up so much money. They were literally like $10 a year ago. Now they're like 100 or something. I, I don't understand how it happened so fast. I wasn't even able to get like all these cards I wanted. And we have some LLP stuff. Uh, good. They're just so expensive. And then we have some Magic and Trap cards. We have some first edition stuff here, and uh, just some more stuff. These are not first edition, so they're not like, that expensive. Like this, I, I, these are like the three, I guess four, the four trap cards, uh, or magic cards. I want first edition. I need, I mean, I need so many cards, so I need to go back to the store and get more uh, KMC sleeves. Or actually, no, the store I go to doesn't sell them, so I have to order them in Toronto and get these KMC sleeves because I just so nice. Dragon Shield is good sleeves too, but I've been loving the KMC sleeves. I do, again, want a decent first edition because, again, the rarity from a collector's point of view and the price is infinitely better. Like, this is a beautiful card, don't get me wrong, but it's unlimited. It's like probably 10, 20 bucks, maybe five, I don't even know. But a first edition Monster Reborn LLB is like 100, 200 bucks, depending on the condition, maybe more. And that in itself holds a lot of significance, especially when you're holding the card, knowing that you have this rare thing that had a limited print run. That's why this is unlimited to me, and like collectors like me are just, it's beautiful. I get to see the card and hold it, but it doesn't have that like extra significance, as opposed to like holding this, uh, where is it, Torrential Tribute. First edition from uh, the Labyrinth of Nightmare. I got this a couple weeks ago, or maybe a week ago. Like, it just, you just feel it. It's like, wow, like, bro. It's hard to explain. But those of you out there who know what I'm saying, most of the cards I collect are going to be within the GX era. Ultimate Rares are just some of the greatest because, again, Ultimate Rare First Edition because the print run as well as the rarity and it, the cards are just beautiful. Like, the Ultimate Rares shine to it. Those are what I'm going to be investing a lot in. The sealed Yu-Gi-Oh! market is actually not that expensive, and that's something I've been taking note. It's the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX seal has been going up a lot. Don't get me wrong, but the older stuff, like the, uh, not LLB, but the MRL, MRD stuff, I mean, it's expensive, don't get me wrong, but relatively, it's not increasing as much as, like, the GX stuff. The GX stuff, like, go oh, right, right back up, but it's almost more expensive, in my opinion. Relative, if you, if you factor in, like, time decay, and like the supply, the GX stuff is more expensive than the older stuff. But that's just also because maybe people like this stuff more. The cards are cooler, to be honest, in my opinion. I don't have too much sealed, but I don't know. The LLB stuff um, is a great investment, but again, it's they're just expensive. They're hard to get. But the the other MR like MRL, LON, stuff like that, those sets with those ultra rares and stuff and super rares. They could be very good to add to the investment portfolio or whatever of collectibles, but anyway, I think that's enough talking for now. Let me know if you want me to talk about anything specifically. I'm still going to be working on my binder and stuff, but you know, it's I don't. It's a slow process. I don't like rushing it. I like to put on some music, you know, sit through my cards, take a look at them all. I'm in no rush to just complete a binder, especially in during quarantine. I'm trying to, you know, I'm not making like a lot of money, so I have to be uh, cautious where I put it, but. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you.